Hello everyone and welcome back to another AP for Teens video on AP US government and politics. Today we're going to be talking about where opinions come from and where public opinion comes from. So let's get started. Now in the last video we talked about a variety of things. We talked about what is public opinion, we talked about the characteristics of public opinion, we talked about what a poll was and the different types of polls as you can see here uh, and click on the link right there for that video if you're interested in watching that. Today we're going to be discussing a number of different things. We're going to discuss the different factors that develop the political beliefs of a person and different people. So let's get started with that. Now the first big term that you have to know in government and politics when it comes to public opinion is political socialization. Political socialization is the development of political attitudes. It's about who can influence beliefs, what factors influence beliefs, when do these beliefs change? It's also where these beliefs can change, why the beliefs change, and how they can change. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. If you answer those things, you can figure out the political socialization and how political attitudes are developed in a variety of different locations. Now, some of the biggest factors, and these are the major factors that develop a political ideology of a person. The biggest one is typically family typically based off of the decisions of adults. You're going to typically have the same party as the parent. A lot of children typically follow what their parents are. So if their parents are Democrat or Republican, the children are going to be that same way as well, or at least leaning in that same direction. You learn your morals from your parents as well, as they're the ones that teach you the difference between right and wrong, what's good and what's bad. They usually stay with people throughout their entire lives. Your decisions and the things that you've learned from your family are ideas that you're going to be keeping not just now, but 10, 20, 30, even 50 years down the line. So family is obviously a huge, huge factor. And if you look at a lot of politicians today, a lot of their parents were of the same party that they are today. Location, location, location. Where you live is a huge factor. If you live in cities like New York or Sacramento, you're probably going to be more liberal-leaning. You're probably going to be more democratic. On the other hand, if you live in anywhere in Texas or if you live primarily in the mid middle section of the United States, you're going to be more Republican. You're going to be more conservative. Those in rural areas are going to be more socially conservative than those in urban areas. Again, with the New York and the Sacramento idea, those are more urban areas. So as a result, they're going to be more liberal. More rural areas, like the middle of the United States, uh, the mountainous regions in the United States, are going to be more socially conservative. School is a huge factor as well. You learn about history, government, and politics through school. For example, the fact that you're taking AP US government and politics. You're exposed to the perspective of your teachers and your peers. A lot of people tend to develop their beliefs based off, off of what your teachers are, because next to your parents, those are the guys that you're spending the most time with. Your peers as well, your friends, if they typically believe something, peer pressure can kind of help you to push you towards that same sort of idea. There are other factors as well. Don't think that those three are the only factors. Religion is a huge factor. It's kind of similar to school in that you see the views of other people shaping your personal views. If you look at the type of people that you hang out with the most, it's usually your parents, your teachers and friends, and after that your religious leaders like your local church or something like that. The media is another huge factor as well. TV, radio, magazines, the internet, and all other sorts of types of media shape your view from corporations like MSNBC to Fox News. Higher education, college education impacts your views as well. People typically care about politics primarily in late high school and early college. So many of the opinions that you get from college are going to help develop you. When you go to college, that's usually the first time that you're completely independent and as a result are more susceptible to the, the ideas of your peers and fellow college students as well as your professors. And finally, your experiences, your family responsibilities, property ownership, even discrimination that you face, all can impact the way that you look and feel about politics and about government in general. Now that's the end of this video, it's a rather quick video. Now answer below, how many different types of political ideologies can you think of? Can you think of just two? Are there three? Or are there even more types of political ideologies in this turning age? Because as in the next episode, we're going to be talking about political ideology. 
Thank you so much for watching. As always, please make sure you subscribe, leave a comment or a like if you're interested in the channel and all of the different types of videos that we have. Content is posted as frequently as possible. Answer the question below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great day.